Channel 5 Network. This is KFASA Nashville. Bienvenidos and welcome to Kepasa Nashville. My name is Cristina Allen and thank you for joining us. I am very proud to have a new guest. His name is Desmond Armstrong. He's a retired American soccer defender and midfielder for the United States National Soccer Team. He is in the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame in 2012 and he was on the 1988 Summer Olympics in um, South Korea and was also a member of the World Cup 1990 team. Thank you very much, Desmond, for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. This is very exciting for ha someone at your stature <laughs> being here in Nashville, you know, <laughs> because you played World Cup, which is what the world language is in sporting. But tell me about yourself and how you, uh, Maryland, yes. growing up in Maryland, yes. get into the World Cup. Well, I was born in Washington, D.C., and D.C. is a very diverse area. Um, soccer at that time was just being sort of introduced to America. Pelé had actually come to the States back in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And did After he play for New Jersey? Where did well, he play? Well, he played in New York. Played okay, for the New York. Okay. New York Cosmos. Okay, I remember but, that. But equal to that, we had a franchise right there in Washington, D.C. called the Washington Diplomats. Okay, good name. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was. <laughs> And so we got introduced to the sport, but for myself, I was born in the city of D.C. And soccer is not really known in the city. My parents actually moved out of the city uh, to the suburbs where I got introduced to the sport. And, uh, and with that, I actually f fell into it. I went into a, um, a basketball game with a young boy on a black top. I felt I could play basketball better than he, challenged him to three games. He beat me two out of the three. I ended up crying and we got into a fight because he was laughing at me. <laughs> and uh, he ran home. His father brought him back and said, my son will never come home crying from a fight. So he made us fight again. <laughs> and then after that, we shook hands and his father happened to be a soccer coach and told me to come out for the soccer team the next day. That's how I got into the sport. Great, great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful introduction, true story. And so I stayed with it. He, took, he showed me who Pelé was. He showed me about the sport itself. And then from there, I just kind of stayed into it. My folks said, if you get involved, we want you to see it through to the end. Otherwise, don't get involved. And so by chance, I stayed involved. And how old were you at the time? 11 years old. Okay. And so I, I stayed committed, continued to play. I was horrible in the beginning, but I was there because of community, because he became my best friend, the boy that I was fighting and played basketball with became my best friend. His father was a soccer coach. They carried me to games and I started to excel based off of my athletic ability and also the commitment that we put into it as a family. I got a scholarship at the University of Maryland ultimately and from there played for four years in the ACC and got noticed from that to play professionally. And was that difficult? And I'm not going to say back then, I don't know what year that was, but was it, I mean, because soccer still struggling but come a long way you know but maybe not in the in the northeast because no, no, of it, it, it's a very a valid question it was struggling in the sense that it was still a new sport still growing some some exposure in this country of course we're in america basketball football baseball are the dominant sports here and you have foreigners coming to play the sport so everybody saw soccer as a foreign sport correct uh, we stayed involved because of being in the suburbs it was something for us to do and so getting exposure was difficult. To make it to be a pro at that time was very, very difficult. But for myself, the area that I was in, we played soccer. Okay. And so one of our guys out of high school got drafted to the New York Cosmos where wow. Pelé played. And when that happened, we all felt, well, if he can do it, yeah. we can do it too. And again, for myself, I got a scholarship, but I still had that dream of playing a pro. And went to college, got my education, but then after which, I pursued pro. And I got a chance to play uh, indoor soccer at the time, okay. 1986, way back when, 1986. And from that, I also got the opportunity to compete for the Olympic uh, team. And so in competing for the Olympic team, um, you were part, you know, you trained with them. How does that work? You were chosen regionally or just someone came and picked you and started kind of recruited you? Well, the term is regional. You start with your state. From there, you become one of the better players in the state. Then you move to the regional team, compete against the other four regions, other three regions, rather. And from that, they pick the best players. Okay. When they did that, I got into that pool of players. And then from that pool of players of about 72 players across the nation, they decide, oh, we'll take these guys. You come on trial, and then they make the selection for the final roster. And do they base it on your position, or do they give you a position, or do you, new, new, I mean? They base it on your position. Okay. Typically, a coach will say, okay, I want to form a team almost like a, a puzzle. Okay. And so I want to form a puzzle that's round. I need 
curved edges. Okay. So they go look for those curved edges and okay. thus the other pieces in the middle. So when you played for the summer, you, you got to be for the national team, went to the Summer Olympics. Tell me about that experience. Because yeah. at that time, were we even looked upon the United States as a contender? No, no, not at all. Okay. I mean, we, you know, soccer, and American soccer, no, no chance. Uh, we had no fans and so forth. A tremendous experience, though, because you get a chance to represent your country. A lot of people in America don't really understand the magnitude of representing your country as other nationalities understand that. There's a lot of nationalism to it. For us, as Americans, we look at the Olympics and say, okay, we're going to come and support our Olympic team because we're Americans. For other countries, they look at soccer as a way to announce to the world, this is who we are. And so for me and all of my teammates, Getting to the Olympics, we played against Argentina in the first game. They had just won the World Cup in 86. <laughs> we were in the Olympics in 88. Maradona was not on that team, but it was still Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we played against the Soviet Union back then when it was known as the Soviet Union. And we also played against the host of South Korea. So we tied Argentina in the very first game. We were up 1-0. We and were, that was a wow factor. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean that was yeah, huge. It was that huge. was huge. The yeah. Americans mm -hmm. up 1-0 against Argentina. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So they ended up you know, tying us. Um, late call, they got a call, got a penalty shot, they scored. Well, you and remember the details. I remember the over. details. I know. <laughs> I know it's ancient history, but it was a tremendous feeling for us to play on the world At stage. That level. Yeah, on the world stage, in front of everybody, and to say that we can actually do this. Well, and my mother's from Mexico, and as a child growing up in New Mexico, we would watch the World Cup and Spanish stations, and that was what she lived for, and did not understand it till as an adult, because that was the only sport that represented Mexico at that level. Yes, a few tennis players, but not really, I mean, we're talking just football, you know, yes. and that's what it was. Baseball was big, too, mm -hmm. in the northern part of Mexico, but I can understand that, that that's the only sport that everyone had a common denominator with. Exactly. Again, it's from a national nationalistic perspective. That team represents the entire nation and that team says to the world, here's who we are. This is us. So every fan is with every player on that team saying, this is who we are. We don't necessarily have that same mentality here in the States because people know who the United States is by way of the military, by way of the government, by way of finance. And we come together during special events like the Olympics. Maybe not necessarily the World Cup, but the Olympics, yes. But do you think most of these people who travel, travel for to the Olympics for soccer versus we can travel for, oh, let's go to the gymnastics, a little bit of swimming, maybe get a rowing in there, and, you know? Is that as Americans we see it as support of the U.S. versus our U.S. soccer team? Yes. Okay. Yes, without question. We would go for the event. And the events as it pertains to the Olympics as opposed to just one particular sport. Wow. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back to talk about your World Cup as well as some of more your professional, your broadcasting. So we'll be right back with Desmond Armstrong, a professional soccer player here here in the in Nashville, Tennessee. We'll be right back. We'll go back. 